Who here struggles with bending tubes? The bend has kinks or flat spots, the tube started bubbling, or you were struggling to get the perfect length. I am here to help you perfect all those issues. My name is Corey. I've been water cooling PCs for the past eight years, and when I say eight years, I mean every single day. And I wanna pass that experience on to you. So if that interests you, consider subscribing and joining our Discord. Let's start off with achieving the perfect bend. Tools we need are a heat gun, a tube insert, some form of soap soapy lubricant like dishwashing liquid or soapy water, the tube and the tube cutter. It is important that the inner diameter of the tube matches the outer diameter of the tube insert. The tube insert holds the tube's circular form when performing the bend. This process is exactly the same for acrylic and PETG, however PETG has a lower melting point. It is also much easier for beginners. Let's take a look at some of the different scenarios that can happen when bending a tube. Number one using a tube insert. As explained previously, a tube insert is crucial for holding a tube's form. Without it, I guarantee you, you will not be having a water-cooled PC up and running today. Let me show you what happens when trying to perform a 90 degree bend without a tube insert. Number two, you are holding the tube too close to the heat gun. Remember, the closer you are to the heat gun, the hotter the air is. By holding it too close, the outside of the tube is heating up a lot faster than the inside of the tube. This results in the outside of the tube reaching bending point much sooner than the inside, which in turn creates blisters or bubbles. To avoid this, let's raise the tube up a little more to have an even spread of heat. Number three, you keep getting flat spots. Flat spots indicate that the tube has not been heated up enough. You may have heated up the tube enough to create that 90 degree bend, but some parts have not heated up enough and that results in flat spots. A good rule of thumb is once the tube starts to heat up and collapse on itself, Give it another five seconds of heat and it should be good to go. Number four, you get a nice bend, but each straight has a small bump on the long sides. You were doing everything correctly, holding the tube at the perfect distance, rotating the tube so there's a perfect spread of heat. However, you are concentrating the heat in one section. By doing so, you are not heating up enough of the tube to get a perfect curved bend. I recommend rotating the tube while also moving it along the tube back and forth to heat up a larger section. This will result in the perfect tube bend. Number five, you keep getting kinks. Kinks are the result of overheating a tube. The tube is almost at melting point. The heat on the inside is trying to escape and blowing up the tube a little bit. When you go to bend the tube, that small blow up or bubble results in a kink. As previously stated, a good rule to follow is once the tube starts to heat up and collapse on itself, give it another five seconds and it should be good to bend. Now that we know how to fix all of these issues, how do we actually measure up a tube? There will always be some waste tubes. Nobody ever gets all tubes perfect 100% of the time. One bend, however, is super easy to get perfect 100% of the time. Let me show you how. If you were measuring out for a single 90 degree bend, let's just add a little extra length on each side so that we can cut it down to size rather than risking it having come up short and making that whole bend bin waste. Waste this, not this. Two or more bends is when it gets a little more challenging. Make your first bend as usual. This is now not an issue for you all. Most people tend to hold the tube in place, mark where the tube line up on the second fitting and make the bend there. The problem is they are not taking into account the circumference of the bend. The tube outlet will bend past the fitting, making it too long. One way you can try and avoid this is by measuring how far the outlet is from the center of the first bend. Subtract that number from the mark that lines up with the fitting and create the bend there. This is not always 100% accurate because it also depends on how well you spread your heat when you are over the heat gun. And there's also a bunch of other small factors involved. But as I said, nobody, nobody gets every single bend perfect 100% of the time, but this will get you as close to it as possible. You have bent your tube perfectly, what are the next steps to take to prepare the tube? You are going to need a deburring tool. You may notice that after each cut, there are burrs on the inside of the tube. We need to remove them. This is a fairly simple process. Just insert the tube, 
and starts turning until the inside wall of the tube is completely clean. The outer diameter of the tube also needs some work done. By leaving it, the rim of the tube can actually damage your O-rings. We wouldn't want to risk that. Simply rotate the tool to remove that sharp edge. My goal here is to help people and teach so that they can be informed when they are making their next purchase. Water cooling is very expensive and it can become even more expensive if proper planning and research is not done. If I can make it easier for you all, that's all I'm after. I hope this video has helped you in your water cooling journey. Consider subscribing, join our Discord community. We would love to chat with you and consider joining our Patreon. Thanks for watching guys and we'll see you all in the next one.